or some indication of what does it mean to live in isolation, here's the catch, while around people. Did y'all hear what I just said? What? Yeah, I see. You, you, you can be lonely in a crowded house. God, I can't hear nobody in here. You, you can have your phone ringing all day long and you don't want to talk to none of them because you know they all want something and nobody ever asks how you doing. That's the liability of being a strong person. Nobody ever thinks you have a weak moment. And so rather than tell folk what you're going through, you just suck it up, keep it together and tell yourself it is what it is. And so you, 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 you've got to entertain it in your mind through the psychosis of a champion. Yeah. How, how, how do I believe? I need you to catch this. How do you believe when this woman in our text has never been prophesied to? How, how, how do you keep your faith uh, when, when, when you ain't holding on to some word? Yeah, how, 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 how do you keep your buoyancy when you feel like you are drowning in your own negative thinking? Yeah, uh, Bishop told you, um, I uh, just been uh, in Atlanta for nine months, and uh, I, I've been in, in uh, Atlanta for nine months. I, I followed uh, the late uh, Bishop Eddie Long and uh, took over New Birth Cathedral in Stonecrest, Georgia. I've uh, been there now. Don't clap yet. You don't, you don't even know why you clapping. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the question, Bishop, that is asked of me uh, is, uh, why in the world would you go take this church uh, in a city that you are not from, hear this, uh, and leave a church you started? I'm, uh, I'm third generation AMA. Yeah. Uh, my father was presiding bishop at the AME Church. Uh, my grandfather uh, was bishop in the AME Church. And I'm in Atlanta at a missionary Baptist church. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, uh, Bishop, I started my church in uh, 2000 uh, in Baltimore with 43 people uh, doing a Bible study in my living room. Uh, primarily of people who I grew up with, people who I went to high school with. And uh, within three years, I went from 43 uh, to 4,000. Then uh, 10 years, I'm at uh, 10,000. I started my church uh, at 28. And uh, amazingly, uh, I, I went through all of uh, uh, the vicissitudes of life out loud. Yeah, so I'm, I, I, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm the Gary Coleman of the gospel. I, I went through all of it. Uh, in public space, got, got married in public, went through a divorce uh, in public. And uh, I, I saw my church uh, mushroom uh, from 43 to 10,000. My sanctuary in Baltimore held uh, 2,500 people. Uh, I'm doing three services on Sunday morning and uh, had to have police out directing traffic. Uh, and then uh, I went through my divorce and uh, you could skip rocks in Mayberry. It was, uh, <laughs> I mean, you could just throw a brick and not hit nobody. Uh, and then through the grace of God, uh, we, we rebuilt uh, all of those services back. And uh, Bishop, about two years ago, uh, I slipped into depression. Uh, I slipped into depression, and I need you to hear me. I, I slipped into depression while the church was growing. I, I, I slipped into depression uh, while it is that I'm on TBN, on Daystar, on the Word Network. Uh, I'm, I'm unhappy. Uh, it, it, it got so bad, some Sundays my deacons had to come get me uh, in between services because in between services I go in my office, lay on the couch. Uh, and they were like, come on, Rev, you got to come do it one more time. Was, I, I was like Samson, putting my hand on the pillow. Lord, give me strength kill all of them. I just want to go. Y'all didn't think that's what I was going to say. I was, uh, but it, 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 because I, I had felt like my season was up. 
I felt like my season was up and there were no books. Uh, that, that There was no books out for what to do when your season is up in a place where you were assigned. Y'all got quiet. What, what? Uh, that, that, that there was no manual for me to be able to read on how, how do I transition when there is no road map. Uh, that, that, that there was no advisor for me to go talk to. What, what do you do uh, when you leave the denomination of your heritage and your lineage and go to a place that you do not know? Y'all not saying nothing. And I, I, I had to trust God because at 45, I said, there's no way in the world, because uh, I've been doing this since I was 28, I, I can't do this till 65, sitting in a wicker chair with a cassage for my anniversary uh, and saying, this, this, this is all that I got. Uh, and, 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 and God had to bring me to the resting notion. Uh, you only trusted me when it was thriving. Hallelujah. But that's, that's, that's not the full manifestation of who I am. It's easy for your mind to be right when you are where you want to be. But can you trust me with your mind when it makes no sense, when you've got no confirmation, you got no indicate. I'm talking to somebody in here. Some, sometimes what you think is warfare, this is for five of you, what you think is warfare is really transition. And, and you trying to figure out God what do you have for me in this next season and he said to Abraham I'm not even going to tell you where you're going I, I just need you to follow me and trust me in places where you got no confirmation how y'all how y'all I was in uh, Atlanta last summer at the AME convention and I'm bemoaning to myself about what I'm going to do for the next 20 years because I'm unhappy and I'm peaked out and there's no retirement plan for 45. <laughs> Y'all laughing. It's, it, this is a real come to Jesus meeting for me. I'm, 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 I'm trying to figure out uh, what to do. And uh, I'm at the AME convention uh, in Atlanta and uh, and I'm, I'm really just in a daze trying to figure out why I'm there, what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a son of the church. Um, everybody just assumed at some point you're just going to be a bishop and you just go on. Yes. And I was clear that wasn't a call of God on my life. Uh, so it, it didn't fit the construct of the ethos in which I was placed in. So I didn't know what to do. So I'm uh, getting on the elevator at our AME convention and uh, coming down on the elevator is Bishop Neil Ellis from the Bahamas. And I uh, said, hey, Bishop, what you doing here? He says, uh, oh, I'm in town. I'm uh, over the search committee for new birth. I said, oh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> he said, what you doing here? I said, I'm, I'm at the AME convention. He says, oh, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what you need me to do, Bishop? He says, uh, I need you to go preach for me at New Birth uh, on the fifth Sunday of September. I said, oh, Bishop, that's nice. Uh, I don't preach out uh, on Sundays. I'm, I'm at my church on Sundays or I'm on vacation, but I don't not. Uh, <laughs> I ain't leaving my church to go preach at an empty church. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, the, only the preachers know what I'm saying right through here. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not leaving to go do that. Uh, he says, I, I need you to do me a solid. I need you to do me a favor. Uh, j just go, can you give me a fifth Sunday? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a fifth Sunday. Uh, he said, uh, go, go, go over there and preach for me on fifth Sunday. So I said, oh, okay. He said, now get it out your head. I know you, Jamal. Get it out your head. Uh, this is not your church. This is not your church. Uh, the prerequisite uh, is uh, you got to be married. I said, oh, okay. I wasn't looking to go nowhere. Uh, you, you can't reject me for what I ain't applied for. <laughs> Are you telling me no before I eat mass? I go sit in that church on the fifth Sunday of August, and uh, church uh, seats almost 10,000 people. Uh, the bishop has been uh, uh, deceased for a little over two years, and... Uh, uh, while Bishop was alive before in his prime, they were doing three services on Sunday. 
uh, one on Saturday, two on Sunday, uh, 10,000 seat sanctuary. I'm there the fifth Sunday in August and it's down to 1,200 people. 1,200 people. And I'm sitting in there and I heard God say, this your church. I said, no, no, no. I said, <laughs> I said no, mm-mm, mm-mm. I, I, I got three full services in Baltimore. I, I, I said, uh, I already got a strategy, I got a plan, and uh, we only got $3 million left in debt. Only got $3 million left in debt. God said, mm-mm. <laughs> I'm going to bring you here to this church that got $30 million in debt. I said, no, but the math is off. The math is, you're supposed to take me from 30 to 3. That's, that's how favor works, 30 to 3. And uh, God, God said, no, I'm, I'm getting ready to reverse it. I'm getting ready to reverse it uh, because um, I see, Jamal, what your problem is. I, I, I said, well, what's my problem? He said, you are anointed without a challenge. Y'all just, let me give that again. He said, you are anointed without a challenge. And so you have put faith on cruise control. So you no longer in your success have anything to believe in. And at some point you walked out of faith and started depending on ability. So you got bored with your own capacity. So now I got to force you to trust me again. Mm-hmm. I can't hear nobody in here. So I'm, I go back home. I go back home. Because remember, I'm just preaching. I ain't even a candidate. I ain't interviewing, I ain't applying, I'm just there preaching. And uh, next month, uh, I'm in my church, and uh, I'm in the back uh, shaking hands after church, getting ready for the next service in three. I, I pastored in Baltimore, uh, Gen Xers. I, I got a hip-hop church. Uh, most of y'all couldn't go to my church. Uh, <laughs> well, my old one, my new one, all y'all would fit right in. But... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I see three men uh, in the receiving line to shake hands, and they got on three-piece suits uh, and ties and Stacy Adams shoes. I know they don't go to my church. Uh, so uh, they, they shake my hand and say, hey, uh, Pastor, we deacons uh, from New Birth, and uh, we came to get you. I said, hey, 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 I got members around here. Listen, <laughs> y- y'all go wait in my office. We can't do this right here. We can't. We can't do this right here. I said, the Lord said, this is where you're supposed to be. I said, Lord, uh, ain't no way in the world. And uh, I, go, <laughs> I go and meet them uh, in the office. They said, uh, Pastor, we down to the last five. Uh, had 138 people apply for this church. We down to the last five, and you're supposed to be there. I said, no, I ain't, I ain't supposed to be there. I says, uh, I said, the last interview is Wednesday. Where are you Wednesday? This is what these deacons asked me. Uh, I buzzed my secretary in. Hey, where am I Wednesday? She said, uh, Pastor, you in Atlanta Wednesday. I said, Lord, all right. Uh, and regrettably, I'm on speakerphone, so they know. Uh, <laughs> I'm in Atlanta Wednesday. So uh, I, I, I get down to Atlanta uh, on Wednesday. And uh, uh, they've already interviewed their last five candidates. Interviewed their last five candidates. And uh, I'm the last one to come in because uh, I'm not scheduled. I done broke the rank. And uh, they ask the chairman of the search committee, I think gives me a sign from God. This ain't where I'm supposed to be. Chairman the search committee says, uh, Brother Pastor, we got to ask you a question. Thank you for stopping by today. You ain't gone through the protocol, through the procedure. It's okay. These deacons done brought you in here. You done broke up all of the protocol. I, I just got to ask you a question as the chair. How you think you're going to pastor this missionary Baptist church and you A or me? The lights went on. I said, God, you just confirmed it. This is not where I'm supposed to be. Thank you. I, I had a little tear well up on me. I said, Lord, the prayers of my deceased grandfather have come all the way to Atlanta to stop me from going Baptist. I, I said, this is a, low. this shall be a sign unto you. 
I am with you always to the end of the earth. So he says, uh, Brother Pastor, you are, uh, you AME. How are you going to pastor uh, this missionary Baptist church? And uh, I'm thinking of an answer uh, to say, um, you're right. That's what I'm thinking of an answer to say, you're right. Before I could think of that answer, uh, the former first lady of a new birth, wife of Bishop Long, widow of Bishop Long, raised her hand, said, Mr. Chairman, can I say something? So I said, yeah, you can say something, first lady. Says, I don't have no problem with him uh, being an AME. I was raised in an AME church. Um, uh, my father is a, is a retired presiding elder in the AME church. I'd be glad to have an AME. I went to college on an AME scholarship. Now I'm crying. I'm like, Lord, this ain't the sign I was looking for. I was, soon as she finished talking, chairman of the deacon board raised his hand. Says, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I speak? Says, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a lifelong AME. And... Uh, my job moved me to Atlanta. And uh, I, I, I met uh, Bishop Long at the 100 Black Men Convention, told him I'd moved to Atlanta. And the Sunday after I joined, he made me chair of the deacon board. So I don't even know how to run no Baptist church. All I know is AME. Tears now just coming down my face. <laughs> Saying, Lord, how in the world uh, are you going to get this? How, how in the world uh, are you going to do this? And uh, I, I called uh, to my dad, who's uh, uh, just retired last summer uh, as presiding bishop of the AME Church. This is my out. Uh, he, he is the gatekeeper for everything that is AME. I mean, he, uh, he, <laughs> he wears a sweatsuit with an AME medallion to the supermarket. I, ain't no way he going to let me out of this. I, so I said, I'm, I'm going to lean on the bishop, uh, to lean on the bishop to make sure uh, that this doesn't happen. So I called him, you know, when you talk to uh, your parents, it don't matter how old you are, you revert back to your child voice. Yeah, don't matter how old you are. Uh, so I called my father, Daddy. Uh, <laughs> I, called, I, called, I revert right back to 11 years old. I said, Daddy, uh, these men, these men in Atlanta, I'm acting like somebody picking on me. That these men in Atlanta want me to be their pastor. He said, oh, yeah? I said, yeah, but I told him, you ain't going to let me go down there to Atlanta to go pastor no missionary Baptist church. And uh, so I'm waiting on him to tie it in like, yeah, you right. Ain't no way. And uh, the bishop goes silent. Go silent. This, this messing up the plan. It's, it's messing up my mind. And uh, then uh, you, you, you got to know my dad. My dad is, is, is a mystic. My dad go into prayer, and he, he don't do midweek prayer. He do early in the morning, well, I seek him prayers. And uh, uh, he, he begin praying, God, and the guest sent me prayers. Not I will, but your, now my eyes are open. This ain't the prayer I want. I want him to pray this off. And uh, when we finished praying, he said, Jamal, when you were called to preach, what did God say? I said, he, he, he called me to preach for this generation, he called me to preach to impact culture, he called me to preach to raise up a prophetic witness in a despotic administration. He said, when he called you to preach, what's your call to preach, AME? Oh, God, I can't hear nobody. He said, I, I, I said, no, when I was called to preach, he didn't say nothing about AME. He, he, he said, uh, it, it is the church uh, believing in Jesus and him crucified. And then he rose again. And they coming back. I said, I, I said, yeah. He said, do you think God is in it? I said, yes, yes, sir. God is in it. He said, take your assignment. I, 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 don't, I don't know who this is for. This, this wasn't even what I was planning on talking today. But I'm telling you, when God calls you, God never called you for what you signed up to do. He, he never called you for what you are trained in. He never called you in what matches your background. He never called you in something that other people can equip you for. He'll call you and won't give you a mentor. He'll just say, trust me, even if it messes with you your mind. This is my assignment.